This video is sponsored by Formation. Stick around to hear more about how Formation is training the next generation of top level software engineers or learn more at the link below. Hello everybody, my name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel. So this is a question I get quite often in my comments and DMs about whether it's ever too late to get into tech. And immediately my answer is always no, it's never too late to get into tech no matter what life stage or age you are. But I wanted to make a dedicated video on this topic. And I'm guessing that those of you who clicked on this video are not really looking for like a one word answer and you're just trying to get more perspectives on the matter. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And as a lot of you know, that's not a part of my journey. That's not something that I've been through. And so I interviewed some folks who have been on this journey to share their perspectives and thoughts too. So meet Dana. Um, so I live in Jacksonville, Florida. I I am currently 48, almost 49 years old. I was a travel agent for most of my professional career, so 20 plus years in travel. On the personal side, I'm married. I have a daughter. She's 11. She's the light of my life. And she was one of the reasons why I decided to transition into a new career. I'm Chris. Yeah, my name's um, Chris. I live in the uh, south of the UK. Two young children, a six and a three-year-old, married as well. So um, yeah, I've been married for a few years now. We got married in New Zealand. And then after that, we had a, a five-week holiday in New Zealand, kind of in a camper van touring North to South Island. And that was kind of, I suppose, starting point of my transition into tech. I've uh, recently started an iOS developer job at a company called GCN. So that's the Global Cycling Networks. They're predominantly a YouTube channel, but they've got a, a mobile app uh, for iOS and Android. Both Chris and Dana were doing work that was vastly different from software engineering but they ultimately both decided to make the switch because they wanted to do something that they enjoyed and that they were passionate about as their full-time job. I wanted to find something I was passionate doing. Like I said, I'd worked at the pre my previous company for, at that point, about 10 years. And by the time I left, it was about 13 years. And I, I kind of fell into that job from leaving college. It was, a, it was a good job and it paid well and I was reasonably good at it, but it was never something I was really passionate to go to work to do. I, I knew I had been burnt out of doing customer work. So essentially I was in the travel industry, but it's very customer facing. And I was hooked to a headset for almost 20 years and like immediately available to people. And I enjoyed being of service. But at some point, you know, especially with my daughter being sick, I began to not attach such importance to getting somebody where they needed to go. And I more wanted to go where I wanted to go. It became my turn to get to a certain age to have lived enough of life to go, you know what, I don't have to do what somebody else that I might be good at. I can do what I want to do with my life. And even if I fail, I can try this out and I can see if I like it. To find something that you love to do all day, every day, like in your mind, trying to solve something that you can't figure out. It was such a big deal for me. For the first time, I'm gonna pick what I wanna do. I'm deciding what route I want my life to take. And it doesn't matter if I have like 20 professional years left or 40 professional years left. I can choose what I want to do with it. So maybe you're also in the same boat of wanting to make that transition into a tech career. But one of the first challenges and questions you might run into this is, is it too late? Am I too old for this career change? Before we move on, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Formation. Maybe you're in a spot where you have about one to two years of engineering experience, but you're looking to land a top tier role at barrier companies like Google and Facebook and Lyft and Twitch. If so, then you should definitely check out the Formation Fellowship. It was founded by staff level engineers from Facebook and Nextdoor who interviewed thousands of candidates and wanted to create a better way to prep engineers to perform the best that they can. Once you apply and get accepted into their three to six month program, you get a training plan that's personalized to your specific skill gaps with direct mentorship from super senior engineers, and you can get referred directly into top companies in the industry. You can actually do this fellowship part-time and they also have an income share agreement so that you pay zero until you get the job. You can check out their program and apply for free at formation.dev slash Mayuko, also linked in the description box. Thank you so much to Formation for sponsoring. I actually super duper love what they do and I've met so many people on their team who are just amazing, incredible, smart and kind people. In fact, I've got a really exciting announcement with them that's coming up in the next couple of months that I think you'll be really interested in. I've also done a mock interview with their CEO, Sophie, so that'll appear on their Formation YouTube channel and social media, so make sure to stay tuned. All right, now let's get back to the video. Okay, so if we're gonna talk about if someone is too old to join tech, Let's first talk about why the stigma is even there to begin with. 
yeah, you do have that kind of, I suppose, niggle in the back of your mind that, um, you know, might be too old because, like you say, there is that that kind of idea that people are a lot younger. They're coming out of school kind of thing or, or you know, university. Some of these people are sometimes like 25 or something like that. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I started this journey when I was 32. So yes, definitely the stereotype of someone in technology is like a young person, someone maybe in like their early mid 20s. I mean, when you look at like movies and TV shows and conversations online about technology, you know that the audience is definitely younger. And so naturally, I totally understand how it can feel like there's like no one over like the age of I don't know, 35, 40 in tech. Spoilers, there totally are. I've met so many of these people and they're all great. So like, don't trust everything you see online. So the stigma is definitely a challenge, but it's also just like not easy to hop careers either. Especially if a tech career is maybe your second or third or maybe even fourth career, then making that change is gonna be really difficult because you're likely coming from something that's already supporting you and your family and your lifestyle. And that's scary because like, why would you leave something that's like already working? And of course, if you have other people to take care of then that's definitely added pressure and responsibility so how did chris do it i have a very supportive wife which i think really helped she was always very encouraging of me going for whatever it was that i was going for so that really helped and my kids are, were too young at the time but you know as they do grow older i wanted them to see that you can do you know what you are and passionate about what you are what you do enjoy in life as a as a job i suppose as well just kind of went for it kind of thing and and just hoped that it all worked out and um i feel like it came at the right time in life as well in terms of i've done a lot of prep before as well and i felt ready for that transition so and you know one of the questions that came up for me when i was thinking about this topic is are people going to experience ageism if they enter tech kind of later in life and honestly your mileage may vary like depending on which part of tech that you join and what kind of people you surround yourself with there might be some really mean people but it's also totally possible to be in an area where there's a lot of nice people who are never going to say anything like that to you about my age and then i think if i had heard about somebody who's 60 or later and then I remember reading that article about somebody who is like an 80 year old grandma that learned how to code and she's like an awesome kick butt teammate. And I think, no, I don't think it's too late if that's what you want to do. I think it's too late if you just want to make like a lot of money, but if it's what you want to do, go for it. Life's not over till it's over. We might as well live our absolute best and make a bunch of mistakes. Maybe you learn the wrong language or maybe you use the wrong resource or maybe you go to the wrong boot camp. You get closer to where you want by by going through those experiences. No, I definitely don't think it's too late to ever start a career in technology. I, the people I work with vary in age are from the younger end of the spectrum, kind of just starting out. You know, we've got a back end developer who's about 19, 20 and he's incredible but then we've got people who are kind of the, the, the later uh, stage of, of their career as well and, and they're just as incredible as well. The only limitation I've had is myself because I felt that way about me um, like I'm, I'm I felt like in the back like I might be too old they're gonna think I'm too old but the, <laughs> the people that I I worked with in boot camp and my instructors were like 20 years younger than me or more and the people I coded with and the people I was on internship with they're great people and I love them. And one of the women that I worked with in the collab lab, I think I'm older than her mom. I mean, we get along absolutely great. It's not a factor for them. It's like the only limitation is, I believe in my mind, if I were to self eliminate from everything I didn't think I was qualified for or every place I didn't think I fit, I would never try for anything. And that's just not what I've bought into. I believe in the mindset that I was taught that I can make a career change. Anybody can do it if they put in a really whole lot of hard work, a whole lot. So then if it's not too late and you're not too old to make the jump, then should you? And I think there's a lot of things to think about here because this is ultimately a big career transition. One of the things you might think about is how you're gonna teach yourself how to code. There's a lot of different pathways like being self-taught or going to a coding bootcamp or going to a university. I've in fact made a video about some of those topics that again, I will link right here that I hope are gonna be useful. And you know, no matter which path you choose, it's gonna be hard, all of these are very challenging. But I really think that if you really want it, then you're gonna be able to do it. Because you know what, let's be real, it's not an easy task, there's gonna be a lot of ups and downs. You have to kind of get used to rejection because you're gonna get, especially for somebody who's kind of coming from a career switch, you're going to get rejected from pretty much everything you apply for at the start. But that's really, really fundamental to your progression and your learning because hopefully, now I can't obviously say all companies did this because not all companies did, 
but a lot of companies will give you feedback on how well you did, what you could have done better. The job that I now work in was actually a company I applied for two years ago. The developer who reviewed my take home project two years ago gave me a ton of amazing feedback on the project and said, you know, these are all the places that you can improve. Go away and have a look at these kind of resources, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That was back in 2000, uh, 2019. I then met that developer at Hacking with Swift Live in 2019. And obviously that was pre-COVID, so it was an in-person conference. And, you know, we just talked and had a chat. And then I applied for the job again two years later, March last year. I got offered the job and the person who interviewed me gave me all that, that feedback is now my pair programmer, basically. I work with him every single day. I speak to him every single day. One thing I really wanted to kind of make sure I did was to do things that continually put myself out of my comfort zone, just, just to try and learn new things and, and expose myself to new things. But I also learned that maybe if you have a lot of life experience, this won't actually be the hardest thing that you've done. I've been through a lot worse um, in my life. Um, I'm 25 years sober and my daughter had cancer. I've survived both of those things and my life is better for both of those things. Like I've been through a lot tougher things than trying to find a role in a new field. I, I find it gives me perspective. Um, I'm very grateful for every day that I have. My life could have turned out completely differently. I could never have had a family. I could never have done half the things that I've been able to do. I'm just very grateful to be able to have the opportunity to have one more day with my kiddo, to just try and be an okay person and a decent person to be around. And in fact, one of the advantages that you have about coming from a different life into tech is that you're coming in with a lot of great skills already. It's just a matter of translating those intangible skills into ones that are relevant for the job. So yeah, things like project management, planning, learning new skills, gathering and providing feedback, and maybe enduring difficult and challenging times. Those are all kind of honestly underrated skills that a lot of people in tech don't have. So if you already have them, then you know, you're on your way up. So I hope this video was helpful in helping to provide some perspectives and kind of really letting you know, like it's really not ever too late to join tech, even if you're like 80. In fact, there's this one lady that I met uh, who is from Japan and she started developing iOS apps at the age of 80 and I got to meet her at WWDC and she was such an inspiration and she was so cool. But thank you so much for watching the video and a huge thank you to Chris and Dana for sharing me with your stories about doing that transition. I'm actually going to end the video with some advice that they have for all of you about making the switch. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye. The main piece of advice would be talk to people. There's so many times when you're trying to do something and you just think, I'm never going to understand this and I want I want to give up kind of thing. That's where the community comes in. At least for me, I've experienced a really encouraging community. And when you are struggling, you'll start to realize that we're all in the same boat. We are all struggling in some way. To have those people around you to either encourage you or to even if it's just to say, you know, I'm a senior developer, I've been doing this for, for 20 years, but I still had to Google how to put together a table view. Just seeing those small bits of information out there and, and talking to people out there it really just encourages you to keep going and just and it just makes you realize that yeah that we're all human and we're all trying to figure this out together the thing that's been most important to me is listening to the inside of myself and knowing that this is what i want if someone's afraid and they're not sure just check in on the inside and go like is this something that i really truly want because if it's something that you want there's nothing that can stop you from getting it absolutely nothing but if you have an uncertainty that's more based in i'm not sure if this is the right thing i would say try try a try a class try to learn a language you know use some resources see if you truly love it and if you do it's just all systems go foot on the gas never stop but if it's not what you love you're going to find what you do love i i would never discourage anyone from following their passion and their dreams and it sounds so trite but to me it means just the most that you know we only get one lifetime and it's so short you have to absolutely go for what you want